Have we been doing this wrong all this time? All this talk about ABV is driving me to drink. By the way, that's uh, Wild Turkey 101, in case you're wondering. I don't normally do that during brew vids, but today we have to talk about a lot of numbers. Okay, a while back I did a video, which we are going to have removed some of the links from, where I talked about ABV and how to calculate it and that there's a better way. Well, it took a while to figure this one out and I started seeing odd things happening with the calculations. Now, I did not make up the equation, but we did promote it and we did make it into an Excel spreadsheet and we did give it to you guys and for that I am so sorry because it's a little wrong, okay? Um, let's just start with that. What I mean by that is it produces some pretty weird results from time to time. For one, we always assumed it was more accurate because the gravity of the specific gravity of water is 1.000. The, spe the specific gravity of ethanol alcohol is 0.71. So it's significantly lower than water, which means if there's a mix of alcohol and water, you know, like most brews, it should it could be below 1.000 if there's no sugars left, right? Because that's all it is is the density. So ethanol is less dense than water it could have a below one one gravity reading say that like 10 times fast right and do it on camera with no little thingy in front of you you know I have <laughs> no have no there's no teleprompter here <laughs> but anyway so the theory was that that could happen and that the abv would actually be higher because the gravity difference should make up for that right well, some weird things started happening with numbers, and let me just go over a couple. Here's some crazy numbers. For example, 1.100 gravity goes dry at 1.000, right? So it used 100 points of gravity, right? 100 points of gravity. That is, if you use the simple math formula, which is OG minus FG times 1.131.25 equals 13.125, right? Just like it should. Well, the more accurate in quotes, version is 14.2%. That's a pretty big difference. That's a whole percentage point at 13%. That's that's like almost 10%. It's like 8% different. But it gets better if you took that to 1.120 and that stopped at 1.020, still only 100 points of gravity. It becomes 13.125 using the simple calculation because 100 points of gravity is 13.125. But using the more accurate one, it's 14.92%, not 14.2%. Well, that got me curious. That's almost another full point. Yeah, it's 0.7 more percentage of alcohol, yet only 100 points were still used. Just because it started higher, but it only burned 100 points, that's not working for me. I'm not sure of that. Then, let's just go totally insane. 1.200 original gravity, which, by the way, if you actually get a 1.200 original gravity, get another bucket, get another fermenter, dump it in half, fill it with water the rest of the way, because there's, it's just not going to work. I'll just tell you that right in now. In other words, there is such a thing as too much sugars for your yeast. Yeah. 1.200 gravity stops at 1.100. I know, it's stupid, because 1.100 is not a final gravity, it's an original gravity. But just work with me here. It's still only 100 points, right? It's, using the simple ca calculation, comes out to 13.125. Just like the Shocker, other two. 100 points. But it's 18.33% using the more accurate calculation. Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. What this does, though, now, that's one thing, but think about it this way. Let's say you make a brew. Let's say you make that 1.100 and it goes down to 1.000. You back sweeten it. That literally means that according to this formula, you have made more alcohol, even if it doesn't re-ferment. That's, that's just, that's just, that's just, just, just. Okay, there's a flaw in the system. Um, okay, the difference might be for more alcohol in there, but I don't think it's going to make, I mean, in this case, five percentage points different. No, that's not going to be. Um, some other crazy numbers. 1.130 OG with a 0.998 final gravity. Let's say it went a little bit drier because we got that mix in there. That comes out to 19.57% using the accurate method, but only 17.33% using the simpler method. 
That is a difference of 2.2%. I don't think so. I just don't believe that. Then we have the truly silly. 1.140 OG, arguably high, but if it fermented to 1.000, that's 18.4%, which some yeast can do. Now that's using the simple method. But on the more accurate scale, that is 21.1%. That yeast can't do it. Like say you use DC1118, it can't do it. But the numbers can work no matter what yeast you use. The numbers can come out that way. It's just not possible, and that's only 3% higher ABV. Not bloody likely. I actually wrote that. He did. I did find a website that I will link below. It's it's a not a competitor, but it's some guy that made it. I don't really know the validity of it, but it does seem much more accurate. Okay, did find a website with a seemingly more accurate calculator, but in the end, it didn't seem worth the effort over the basic calculation. Let me go over some numbers from that one. I'm going to give you it just because for science. But honestly, I didn't find enough difference. But here, let me let me go over this. A beer, right? 10.55 original gravity, ending at 10.10. Typical beer, nothing fancy. The simple calculation was 5.91%. This website was 5.9%. Literally, 0.01%. I'm sorry, just reading the hydrometer, you can be off by that much and make that much difference. It, it doesn't matter. In wine, 1.120 ending at 10.20 is 10.5% versus 10.63 on his website. That is 0.13%. <sighs> 13 hundredths of a percent. To me, that's so negligible, you could literally make that difference with just reading a hydrometer differently. Time for a drink. All right, then we have the super high gravity version. 1.150. Yeah, I know, it's, you really don't want to brew with that. <laughs> Ending it 1.030. That is 19.69% using this simple formula, which is theoretically possible with some yeasts, you know, versus 20.22%. That's only a half percent difference at a gravity that you're not likely to really ferment at, which means half a percent difference at that rate, it's not even worth it. It just doesn't make sense. So, I know, the moment you've all been waiting for, what formula should we be using to calculate our ABV? The old-fashioned one, the really simple one. Original gravity, minus final gravity times 131.25 equals ABV. That's it. Somebody's gonna say, why the 131.25? I don't know. <laughs> that is just the number we use to calculate it. It has something to do with the difference between alcohols and waters and the densities. I don't know. That is just the coefficient number that is used to calculate it. Before we go much further, how about some questions? Arcstreams, if you started at 1.090, 11.8 ALC, and it finished below that, it does not mean you gained more ALC out of nowhere. Sometimes the reading goes below that 1.000, but all that means is that it ate whatever sugar was in it, so you got 11.8%. I want to talk about this, and I do have a little bit here on this, and then we'll get back to the rest of the questions. This below 1.000 question on alcohol has come up a few times, and if we know that white, like, just here's an example. If we know that white sugar is 46 points per pound in a gallon of musk, that means using basic calculations that if we put three pounds in a gallon, the gravity would be 1.138. Now, if that went to 1.000, the ABV is 18.11%. But if it went to 0.990, which is theoretically possible since alcohol is less dense than water, and there is a decent amount in there, the ABV is 19.4%. Googling the alcohol output of sugar, it's about 6.18% per pound. So that's close to our 18.11. It's actually a little bit higher than that, but not quite 19.4. But that's a hard number, meaning there's only a finite amount of alcohol that can be produced from a finite amount of sugar. It's an interesting conundrum. Um, going lower doesn't really add more alcohol, though, does it? I mean, how can it? You can't get more alcohol from what's already there. Some have proposed not calculating anything below 1.000. I'm not sure. There's more research to be done. And if anyone knows the answer to that, and I mean real solid, solid definitive science, um, I want to do something special with this. We're going to make another video, another brew talk that talks about just this probably. If I can find somebody that's actually an expert on this, um, might even be like an interview kind of thing, uh, some sort of you know, online collaborate. I don't know. But I actually want to do something interesting with this because this is an interesting... Uh, mental project to me. I don't think it's possible that it produces more alcohol, but at the same token, I know why it goes below 1.000, and that is the absolute science. So, which is right?
to you. Spiderware, seven, 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 seven. Greetings, sir. Good day to you. She's a madam. I started watching your videos a few days ago, and you gave me the confidence to go out and buy the equipment to create my first gallon of mead. You mentioned that honey adds about 35 points on the hydrometer, so three pounds of honey to a gallon of water yields 1.0, sorry, 1.105 at start. If it reduces to 1.010 at the end, that calculates to about 13% ABV. The yeast I bought shocks at 18% ABV. So my question to you is whether you would recommend all the sugar to be consumed, or do you stop the process at a certain point? I'm looking for a drier mead like a good white wine. Keep up the great videos. Okay, everything that you did is going to make a dry mead, without without question. As far as me recommending whether it's sweet or dry, if it's up to me, everything is sweet. That's just me. Well, he wasn't asking you specifically if you recommended it to be sweet or dry. He recommend he was asking if you recommended to stop the process, and the answer to that would be no. Well. <laughs> There's more often There's multiple than not, answers to that. we do not recommend stopping the process. That's very true, more often than not. Because pasteurization can be a little bit dangerous and it's risky, so unless you have a very good reason to stop it, we don't recommend stopping it. Now, ways to control that sweetness level are amount of sugar and yeast. You used an 18% yeast. Short of going past 18% with it, it's going to be dry. Just It's just that simple. And but that seems to be what you want. their intent was to have a drier wine, then that was a perfect selection. Yeah, so if you wanted it sweet, then you'd use a yeast that doesn't go to the tolerance that you were getting, thereby creating it sweeter. I, th I think we answered that question. I think we did too. Okay. Cat girl one. So I'm kind of a math girl, but I'm wondering how you calculate the ABV when you are step feeding, and if you could explain that more in detail. Just happened to have an answer for that one too. Step feed math. A lot of people have asked this, and I actually had a different way of doing it that was more convoluted, more difficult, more complicated, and I don't think more accurate. I think this is the best way to do this. And this works with the simpler formula much better, makes, for, makes life so much easier. Step feed math. Simple. Add all the spent gravity points of your, and your final grav together. That's your original gravity. Calculate as usual using your FG like always. That's it. No, I have, I have more here. But what I mean is, add up all the points that you spent and your final gravity, and that is your original gravity now. Now, let me let me give an example. 1.050 OG ends at 0 0.990. That's 60 points, right? You added a pound of honey to that for a spagur of 1025. That ends at 1.000. You spent 25 more points. Add another pound of honey. Spagur is now 1035. It ends at 1.000. That's 35 more points. Then you add another pound of honey. I know this is getting absurd. You add another pound of honey. Spagur is again 1035, ends at, say, 1020. Now that's 15 more points. So your final gravity is 1.020, because that is what the last one ended at, 1020, right? Your final gravity is 1020. We used up 135 total gravity points. Add that to the final gravity, and we get 1.155 gravity. Pretty high, but it's just an example. So, using the simple formula, 1.155 minus 1.020 equals 0 0.135. Multiply that by the magic number, 131.25, and we get 17.71875 ABV. I'll just call that 17.7. Yay! If we use the online calculator, by the way, that's 18.28, showing less than a half percent. That's the, the fancy guy's calculator, not... We're going to call that one the accurate method from now on, because it's just not, it's, and it's just funny. Anyway, if we use the online calculator, that is 18.28%, so showing less than a half percent higher ABV, not enough to get worried about in reality. So, using the more accurate equation, the more accurate equation, that is 21.28%. It's just silly. So if there is confusion between the accurate, the simple, and that other guys, there are actually three separate things. Yes, let me explain that again. The simple, which is the one that we're going to use henceforth. I can't believe I just said henceforth, but I did. Is original gravity minus final gravity times 131.25 equals ABV. That is it. You can do that in your head. You can do it on your phone. You don't need any fancy calculators to do this one. It's very, very accurate. Okay, the more accurate one is the fallacious, stupid one that creates weird numbers when you back sweeten. And had more math. And had more math involved to the point that I didn't do it in my head or on a calculator. I used a spreadsheet. 
I hate doing that if I can avoid it, and it was wrong. Then we have the other guy's thing. This one, I found it in a forum. Um, he is a brewer, an avid brewer. He's a math guy, so he's probably incredibly accurate. The difference is, how accurate does it need to be? When at 21%, we're, we're like within a half, half a percent of his, using a simple calculation that you can almost do in your head. So it just doesn't make sense. Our recommendation for you is to choose between the simple method or that guy's method link in the description yeah below. if you use the one in the middle you're wrong i'm sorry it's just wrong it's so vastly inaccurate as to be wrong and i don't mean you're wrong the numbers will be wrong and by he what he means by the middle is the more accurate version that is no longer available on our website <laughs> i gotta take that down nathaniel sizemore hi danica and brian it's, it's derica derica but Danica is a really cool race car driver, so I'm okay with that. And Danica is like the most common misspelling of your name. It is. Yeah. At least it's not Darcy. So yeah. thank you for that. Let's not go there. I am making a gallon batch of blackberry wine. It is 10 days old. My initial specific gravity was 1.092. The specific gravity today is 0 0.920. On that, before we go much further, I actually talked with Nathaniel and we figured out that it was 0.992. I calculated the ABV as 22.5%. I used EC1118 yeast. I want a semi-sweet wine. Any recommendations on back sweetening the wine? Will it ferment the added sugar, or did I reach the tolerance of the yeast? Thanks for the information. So, as Brian said... Time for math. He corrected the reading through discussions with Nathaniel. And... So, 1092 minus 0 0.992 equals 0 0.1 times 131.25 equals 13.125. So, what that means is, since he used EC1118, which is an 18% yeast, he's got five more percentage points to go. That's like another pound of sugar to get past that. Yeah. Is it likely to happen? It might. Depends on the strain. Depends on a lot of factors. Um, but if he wanted this to be sweet at this percentage... He would have to pasteurize or kill that yeast in some manner. You could pasteurize this at this point. You want to cap it. You want to put the water on to 160 degrees. Take it off the heat. Make sure that that, can go, that water goes up the neck of the bottle. Put something in the bottom of that pot to keep it off the bottom. Because even though it's off the heat, the bottom of the pot is still a lot hotter than that water. Put your bottle in. I recommend putting another bottle with just water in with no lid on it. That way you can stick a thermometer in there. When that has reached 140 degrees internal temperature, let it sit at that temperature for 15 to 20 minutes. Now you can remove your bottle. It is now pasteurized. That yeast is dead. At this point, it is pasteurized for our intents and purposes, okay? Full pasteurization may be longer, may be higher, but this is to kill yeast and yeast only. So don't confuse that with true pasteurization, which is to kill all the microbes and things like that. This is just to kill the yeast. So 140 degrees is about 20 points, 20 degrees past where you really need to be to kill the yeast. Holding it there at 15 to 20 minutes means you're pretty much assuring the yeast are dead. At this point, you can now uncap that, probably using a cork or a flip top bottles, I hope, because it'll be a lot easier. And you can back sweeten to your heart's content and it should not re-ferment. I say should not, never, ever, ever trust natural things. <laughs> Sounds really funny to say it that way, but it's true. It is a natural process, and it is possible that a couple of your yeasts decided, nope, we're tougher than 140 degrees, and we're going to live anyway. They're sneaky little hobbitses. After all, people have made beer from bread, so that yeast survived over 200 degrees. Don't ask me how. I just know it's happened. So it shouldn't re-ferment, but there is always that chance. So always, you know, be safe. Be careful. Safety first. It's not supposed to come back and hit me. The paper strikes back. So, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions and a lot of comments based on this one because this was a lot of controversial information. And I still really would like to know about that below 1.000 thing from someone that actually knows more about this than we do and probably more about this than they probably should. But still, admit it to us and, hey, you might get a spot on the show. So remember, if you have any questions on this particular topic, please leave them in the comments below. Oh, yeah. Brian does read all the comments and he answers as many as he possibly can. Probably about 80% of them. If you try to Unless contact, you're mean. If you try to contact 
contact us in other means, we may not be able to get to you as fast as we'd like yeah, to. Yeah, this is a new thing that we're doing. Um, we're starting to get to a point where it's just not humanly possible to do all the stuff that we want to do, and we don't want to hire someone to answer your questions for you. We want it to be from us. Therefore, consolidation is our friend. So we're trying to keep everything to YouTube, unless you're a VIP, that's a whole different story. But our Facebook page, if we have a chance, we'll take a look and try to answer questions there. But to me, it just makes more sense. You're on YouTube now. Why not ask the question to you? Anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.